Welcome back to Fearlessly Australian as we wrap up season two. I'm Danny Green. To be honest, I've been amazed and inspired by all the guests I've met over the last 18 months. Everyone has been incredibly honest about their journey and who they are as a person. Whether they've been talking about facing fear, being resilient, getting through tough times, or finding the right people to hang out with, every guest has contributed in a very special way. I've certainly learned a lot about what it means to be a modern man in Australia, and I reckon things are looking pretty good. To help us bring together in this episode everything that is great about being a fearless Australian, we've got a real surprise for you. Yeah. <laughs> Back to you, hi, buddy. Hi, good to see you, Jamie. First, though, let's have a listen to what being fearless means to some of our guests. You're always got to be putting yourself out there and it's about having that confidence in yourself, mm. believing in what you're about, never shying away from something new. Yeah, to me, it's probably doing something that you're scared of, um, having the courage uh, to get up and do something that uh, frightens you. Um, and that's in many different ways. I think it's actually very simple. I think being fearless in 2021 uh, as, as an Australian is actually about being able to live your best life, the best version of you. It's about being courageous to to live in a way that lifts yourself up, but also lives others, lifts up others up around you. Fearless for me in my experience has been not letting your situation or your setbacks determine your story. You know, bad things happen, things can go wrong. Things come out of the middle of nowhere and smack you between the eyes and you go, oh, what do I do now? So many things I could say, you know, there's so many variables around what being fearless is. It's, you know, I go back to the old school macho fearless, you know, I'll do anything, anytime, anywhere against anyone because I'm afraid of nothing. Well, that's kind of bullshit because everyone's afraid and anyone who says they're not afraid is lying. So being fearless, I think, is, is, is admitting to being afraid, but a, being courageous enough to step off the plank. I think Nathan's story was was quite impacting to me. You know, young man with a, with a with a vision and a goal, and um, you know, an amazing amazing young bloke. And then to have that ripped away from him through uh, circumstances not of his own doing, horrific crash, lost his his arm down to, from his elbow down. I can't imagine the trauma that he's been through. But what he just said then is not letting that moment define him not letting one moment define who he is and, and how he conducts his life. And um, Chris Bogus, the three, three bushfires where his life was you know, nearly taken on three different occasions, kind of one's bad, one's shocking. Two's like, well, you're kidding. I can't even explain what three is, so. He's told us that he's been you know, severely traumatised by it and suffers heavily from PTSD. But for Chris to come through and, and then to be able to speak and living his life and moving forward, his interpretation of Phyllis is now, I think, different to what m most people's are because he's been through such an ordeal. What? Are you kidding? <laughs> really? As a representative of the youth of today, Robert Irwin, um, it made me very pleased to sit there and listen to this young bloke because he was so, so full of positivity. I think young blokes can take a lot from him and the other guys, Pastilli and the gaming guys. For them to be able to go out and meet friends online because the traditional way that I was raised meeting mates is playing sport, going to the beach go in the park, whatever it may be. Whereas now, a lot of kids, they're in that online world, they're in that online space where they're meeting people and they're doing things differently to what I did growing up, which is cool. All these guys we spoke to from the gaming world were all doing positive things, all trying to make a positive change in their own community, in their own society, through the online world. So I found that, I found that really cool. Ryder Jack, he was a cool dude, you know, cool dude and you know, I questioned him on a few things because there were a few things I didn't really understand what he was talking about. So it took me a while to kind of come around to where he's thinking. So for me, I've learned a lot through the experience and learned through other people's experiences and listening to people from all walks of life, from superstars in sport to guys who have, have just decided to get up and, and row a, a kayak to New Zealand. And, um, you know, a, a female UFC fighter, a male, Jimmy Crute, you know, hard as nails, tough as teak. You know, fight anyone at the drop of a hat, but a, a, a genuinely humble and open and sensitive guy who's got you know feelings like us all. He's a young guy who's been um, you know, uh, I, I guess a little bit. Um, uh, get out, motherfuckers! How you going? <laughs> there goes that answer. <laughs> Back to you, hey, buddy. 
Alrighty, good to see you, champion. All right, Maxi, Heine, good to see you. I got a bit of a surprise there when you came in. It was, um, it was like seeing a couple of long lost mates. Fantastic <laughs> to have you back on and I uh, hope you've been well. You're looking fantastic. What's been going on? Ah, oh, mate, it's good to be here. It's been a little while since I've seen you, but yeah, you're looking fresh too, mate. And, and <laughs> <laughs> looking, well, I'm, not, look, too. I'm no, not looking, looking fresh, I'm feeling fresh. Hey, you're, you're looking good, mate, you're looking good. I was almost starting to pine. Miss you that much, Heine? You have that effect on people, mate. You haven't been speaking to my wife, though, have you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't, mate. mate. Well, let's cut to the screen and, um, <laughs> and check out uh, some of our last guests that we've had over the um, last couple of years and uh, check out what their thoughts are on coping with change. I didn't know who I was as a person. I mean, no, like, that's just not authentically me. And, and I felt like I had to keep up this act. And it was just exhausting all the time. Um, so for me, it was just becoming at peace with who I am as a person and since that like I would say that I I very rarely I very rarely get angry anymore and if I do it's more of a frustration when I retired it's a it's a it's a it's an emptiness there's a there's there's no and I was just blank and I was it was really strange couldn't explain it, it did put me in up heap because I was asking so many questions because I wanted to try and figure out what was wrong with me and it wasn't until after that, I drove home that day and that's when I started crying to my wife in the kitchen. And she said, look, I've, we've had enough of this. As in, not, not, in a, not in a bad way, but, you know, we've got to start, we've got to, do, we've got to do something about it. And that's when I did. When did you accept who you are? I don't even know if I, you have, or who, I don't. I think you just naturally grow and then you mature. And I'm, I'm very big on reflection and looking back uh, as well as not living in the past, but you know, learning from mistakes, learning from people that you've met, experiences you've had, be present in the moment, have gratitude, and kind of use that to your advantage moving in through life. And I don't know, for me, it's, I'm, I'm still evolving, I'm still learning, I'm still exploring. It took me a while to realise that I don't want to be the biggest dog in the, in, in, in the yard. Mm. I don't care, mate, you can have that, it's all good. I'm just happy doing what I'm doing. Was there a period in your life where, you know, you, you, you go, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm more comfortable being this bloke than trying to be that bloke. Was there ever that? Green, I'm still learning to deal with that. You know, I still struggle, you know? That's, because you, know, you know everything's gonna be okay, but there's that, that, there's those moments of doubt whether you can do it and the, unco it, it, it's, and it's dealing with change. I'm not, I, I don't deal with change too well at all. I, and I'm, I'm learning to deal with that. And I'm still learning to deal with uncomfortable situations. And I'll go through a panic, like, no one I was gonna do this. You know, the, the anxiety levels rise a few days out and all of a sudden, once I'm here, I'm fine. But it's that few days leading into what I've got to do. That, that's panic stages for me. And I'm still going, you know, everything, talk to yourself going, well, everything's going to be OK. There's nothing happening here. You're just going to feel a little bit uncomfortable. And then having those conversations with my wife about being uncomfortable and the reassurance I get from her settles things down. Did you fellas ever feel that you didn't fit in? In, in, in society? There was, there was times when I was uncomfortable in situations I was in, which still am. For me, it's, it's, uh, I've just been lucky. I've always been around a team. But now, more so as I get older, I do like have my own time where I like to go for runs by myself. I like to go surfing by myself. Um, sometimes I like to travel by myself. So, you know, it's I'm not always around teams. I'd do this pattern of one breath every 15 seconds for a couple of minutes before I dive to just slow everything down. I was like, it's simple, but I don't know it. But but having the discipline to do it, um, it would change the way I would think about the fear. It changed my whole outlook and my optimism. Uh, I had severe claustrophobia, like in the kayak, and something that really helped me was a realization that you've got to kind of surrender. Not surrender as in, de like, de with a connotation of defeat. Surrender and accept the conditions. Just accept the fact that it's happened and go, right, well, now that I've mourned that, uh, and I've, I've, you know, thought about that, let's think about what I actually can do and what, what, what can actually leave a positive change in, in my community, in my surrounds. We're talking about coping mechanisms with awkward situations, et cetera. Aunt Williams, one of the fellas we had on, who was a phenomenal guy who became world champion freediver, and that's how he deals with it. For me, I took a lot from that. 
but also I tell my kids, I tell my son, if he gets cranky, you're gonna blow his stack. Mate, step back, take a few deep breaths. And I'm now training, you know, young fighters, etc. I tell them, my breathing's the absolute key. And as you know, Heidi, obviously being a, a high level athlete, uh, it surprises me, and you might correct me if I'm wrong here, that football clubs, etc., or any sporting clubs um, that require a sport that's exerting high energy levels, that breathing isn't one of the first things that they would employ someone to manage and help the young players deal with breathing because that's recovery and you want the optimum performance from your players from the guys in the field i've got four boys at home and they shit me every now and then and i can tap off you do a bit of research and you listen to other people and you listen to the experts and they say you got to remove yourself from certain situations and just stop and breathe but to to have that control to remove yourself yeah. in the first place is is the hardest bit Fellas, we've just spoken about uh, adapting to change, and now we're going to go into a world that kind of makes me a little bit nervous because I don't know much about it, and it's not my world, but having learned a bit, listen to these guys, so let's check out what these guys have to say about being a positive influence in the online world. Looking for role models in life, it's not always coming from, you know, sports stars or movie stars. It sometimes is people that are online playing video games. It's one of those things where um, you don't just go down to the local pub or the sporting club to to make friends. Like there are people that are really good at doing that and a lot more confident. Uh, but there is a really good opportunity in the online space to actually find people that are like minded in a in a topic that you enjoy and uh, to make friends from that. Well, I think online there's so many different communities, whether they're negative or positive. And I think when it comes to uh, leadership, you know, or you know, taking charge in either one of them, um, it happens quite naturally. I think it's just about being that face and uh, being outspoken. And, you know, we talked about always being yourself and not shying away from speaking out against things. And I think that's where um, true positivity comes from. Um, you know, a, a good man will stand up and say something. Mm -hmm. um, so when it comes to fighting negative comments online uh, or this and that, it is about actually speaking up with well, these guys pestily and creator etc they they educated me because i was like you know the online world how do you meet friends there why would you want to meet friends there but you know what it's changed yeah. Um, yeah what are your thoughts on on the online world and and finding um you know positives about it yeah well i was lucky enough to be with you and creator uh for that episode and uh he was a great guy he gave us a lot of insight into his world the last couple of years we've turned from COVID, we've turned a lot of the education online to give people more access around the world to learn water safety and fire safety so i'm lucky enough to be able to do a lot of good and everyone else is doing a little bit of good but there's also the bad side and the negative side as well so i always try and make sure it's a positive energy positive vibe and if there is any dodgy ne uh, comments or people that are not being you know that good i just block them out you just don't engage at all just keep moving forward and yeah i don't really yeah focus on it too much to be honest i do agree that there is a space out there to f make new mates and find because i've I, I got four boys at home i've got a 16 year old and he's He's, he's not super outgoing, but him and his mates are all the same. And they tend to, online is where they are most comfortable. You know, where they can talk about things and, and probably say more online and through their headsets as well. So it's not just all on the keyboard, but they seem to have more, a lot more fun than they would be at someone's house at a, at a house party. My wife and I as parents, have, it's always been the thought of, you know, oh, you're just doing shit on there. You're not doing anything. You're playing bloody games. But it's actually the way that they do a lot of their communicating now is online and doing all that sort of stuff. The best way to handle, um, you know, negative people online, etc. And I said before, you know, I don't, I just don't give them any oxygen. If I ever give them oxygen, that means I lose and I've got to shut up shop. I promise myself, if I make a comment back to some bloke or some hack that I don't, I don't even know. I told my kids, especially my young, you know, my boy's nearly 15. I said, mate, hey, don't read them. Don't read the comments. If you do have social media, generally you try not to read the comments. And it works. It does work. It absolutely works. But then curiosity, unfortunately, always kills the cat. <laughs> so, you, you know, sometimes you want to scratch the surface and go have a look what they're saying. Like, nah, man, you can't do that. You either stick to, the, stick to the plan and don't read them and don't buy into it, and you'll be sweet. All right, fellas, we've spoken about the online world. Now we're going to move into the physical world. We're going to hear um, from the facilitator, Ryder Jack, about what it means to be a modern man. Danny, I agree in one sense with you that I think that old school bloke, he's great and he's, he's important, but I think men need just a little bit more flexibility. 
So I'm not saying to completely throw away masculinity, it's just having a bit of range. So even, mate, you, you even said it. You go, you shake someone by the hand, you look at them in the eye and you have a real conversation. We just need to normalize those real conversations and realize, yeah, go beyond the banter. Talk about struggles, talk about love, talk about happiness, um, talk about everything because uh, it's actually exciting to talk about that shit with your mates, I reckon. Australians traditionally haven't been a, 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 a nation of particular blokes that have been open and discussed their feelings. It's like, you know, no way, it's taboo. Mm. But I think it's changed a lot. It's becoming, it's becoming uh, you know, people are becoming a lot more fluid with talking and, and being open and being cool and blokes and, you know, tough, seemingly tough guys and masculine blokes are talking and... and, 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 and uh, communicating and, and being open and crying and showing emotions you know it's 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 way better yeah what what are, what are your thoughts on on what was just said particularly with what Ryder Jack said about yeah. the old school guy potentially moving into the new school well for guy. me that he nailed that on the head you know because I'm a bit old school as well and I agree with you know you shake the hand you look in someone's eye you shake it firm and my and that's just come from generation after generation for in my family but then having that flexibility to 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 talk about uncomfortable situations and all that sort of I I couldn't agree with more of what he said, you know, and that's it. But, but for me, what is the what is the modern man? What is you know? That's it's always changing, isn't it's it? It's always changing. For me, an old school, you know, seemingly masculine, macho guy that's you know that p potentially would be looked at as, as as having a large amount of masculinity about me. I'm, I was a bloke who was you know raised old school, and that's yeah. who I am. But I was also raised open the door for a lady and do this yeah, and yeah. do that, all that kind of stuff. Raised yeah. as a gentleman, blah blah blah. But All that stuff. But has maturity changed you into into that? But I've always been because I think I was I was the same. Like I was brought up on a dairy farm, tough. Get up, stop crying. Have a crack. Certain words thrown at me were just were normal words that which I you know a lot of the country blokes still use today, which are derogatory and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, but now that I'm matured as a as a bloke and I'm learning, I think that's that's more normal to me now. But having masculinity, yeah, you yeah, still have a like, soft side. Yeah, like I, a, I, I yeah, find definitely. myself being masculine, but you know, I, I'm, I'm a softy on the other side. You know, I know when I, it's time to be masculine and when it's time to be a bit well, softer yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So, and I don't go around, you know, when I go to the pub strutting stuff like I'm, a, you know, chest out and all that sort of stuff. That's not being masculine. It's just being comfortable being a man. I'm trying to get my head around the whole masculinity thing, but for, for me, I've always just focused on the team around me, my family, my friends, people I care about. And then for me to just, like, I feel like even though there's all these things around me, I just don't try not to focus too much and let it fucking get, get involved and get it inside. I kind of keep my, my bubble around me. But this is so hard to get our heads around being an, a, an Aussie man today. What is, what's what an Aussie man? An Aussie man is someone or a mask, or whoever you feel comfortable being is 100%. who you are. All right. <laughs> That's a wrap, boys. Yeah. <laughs> Heidi, Maxie, um, great to see you. Uh, put, a, put a real smile on my face and put a kick in my step. So thanks for coming on and great to hear what you had to say about this topic. And, and uh, again, um, we really appreciate your time and, uh, and your opinions um, to our outstanding citizens and um, to Ripper blokes. Thank you. I'll leave it there. In the meantime, stay safe, remain positive, and most importantly, be yourself.